If you've been programming in Java, you must have heard of the term Java specification or the Java language specification. When someone has a question about Java that's particularly tricky and they cannot find answers anywhere else, they're asked to refer to the official language specification. So what exactly is the Java language specification? And what exactly is in it? Well, let's find out. As with any programming language, Java has a syntax. The syntax is basically how you write your code, its structure. When you write code a certain way and you execute it, you expect it to do what you ask it to do. So if you write code that adds the number one with the number two, you expect the result to be three. What if the contents of the variable a is 30 or the string foo? That wouldn't work and such a programming language wouldn't be very popular or maybe it would. Anyway, at least that language wouldn't be called Java. So the language needs to have rules and be predictable. When you write a certain code, certain things happen. It's predictable. All these rules of the Java language that describe its syntax and its behavior is together referred to as the language specification. And as the language changes, new Java specification documents are released. For example, when Java 7 was released, there was a Java specification document outlining how Java 7 works in every little detail. When Java 8 was released, there was an updated specification released for that version. Similarly, 9, 10, 11, and so on. So a Java language specification document is a formal document that lists down to the greatest detail what the syntax of the Java language is and how to write code for it. For example, it talks about the for loop, how to write a for loop, as well as every possible way a for loop could be written, or lambda expressions. It contains rules that outline every possible lambda expression that could possibly be written. It's detailed, it's comprehensive, and it's awesome because that's a great document for me to read and learn Java from, right? Okay, well, let's take a look at what the specification has to say about the for loop. Okay, here's the part where it talks about looping in the for loop. Okay, so this is clearly not meant for people to read to learn how to start writing code, okay? Well, then who is this actually written for? Who is the target audience for this document? To understand that, you'll really need to understand the difference between the specification and the implementation. While Java is one language, you can choose between multiple JDKs and multiple JVMs. If you need to download and use a JDK, for example, you can choose between OpenJDK, Oracle's JDK, IBM's JDK, GNU JDK, and so on. As for JVMs, you have Hotspot, Zulu by Azul Systems, and a bunch more that I haven't even heard of, like Jamiga or Rope VM. These JDKs and JVMs all behave similarly for most of the time. You can compile a certain Java program and you get bytecode that does what you expect it to do. Well, the internals are obviously different, but the work done by the JDK and the JVM are what you would expect. That is, it's in line with the Java specification document. There are two specification documents, the Java language specification and the Java virtual machine specification. The different JDKs and the different JVMs are implementations of these specifications. These different vendors use the specification to make sure that their JDKs and JVMs do what they're supposed to do. The specs are what these implementations are supposed to do. For example, that cryptic for loop documentation that we just saw in the specification, well, that didn't make any sense to me when I read it, but a JDK implementer can look at that and know how to create a Java compiler implementation that generates the right byte code whenever the Java code being compiled contains such a for loop. You as a developer, knows that whenever you write a for loop in Java, irrespective of the JDK or the JVM being used, that code is going to be compiled and executed in the right way. So while these documents are terrible for someone looking to learn the language, they are a perfect resource to go to if you want to write your own JDK or JVM. 
However, please don't do that. Don't even think about this. You've been warned. These two specifications together are what are referred to as the Java SE specifications. They together outline the behavior of Java SE or the standard edition. There's another specification called the Java EE specification that concerns itself with enterprise edition of Java. You can learn more about that in the video on Java EE. Click on that link to learn more. To summarize, every Java language release comes with a couple of specification documents, the Java language specification and the Java virtual machine specification. They're a quite formal set of documents that help JDK and JVM implementers create different implementations that work exactly like they're supposed to and they follow the specification. And you as a developer know that when you write int a equals one plus two, value of a is gonna be three. I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching.